Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about the remote extension. This allows you to apply clip automation to some of the Zwobot player parameters and you can apply the automation across multiple channels because you can put this remote module on as many different channels as you want. So I've got my player loaded up on an audio channel. I've already loaded seven videos into it. These are all videos that come with the Zwobot suite. So if I just hit play, you can see I've got these videos loaded in. I'm gonna go back to the first one and I'm gonna insert an audio track and drop my remote extension in there. So we've got controls for A and B that relates to video deck A and video deck B. So this number, relates to these videos. So in this case, I've got seven videos loaded up. So as I change this number, one is gonna be the first video, which is the one we've currently got, two is the second video, three is the third video, and so on. And once I get past seven, nothing's gonna happen because I've only got seven in there. But if I had more, they would continue to change. And we've got the same for deck B. The manual beat button is exactly the same as this manual beat bang button. And then we've got these sound reactive controls. And what these do is change the video that's playing based on the incoming audio. So if I've got it set to low, it's going to change the video every time there's a lower frequency that comes in. If I've got it set to high, it'll change whenever there's high frequencies. So I'm just gonna set it to low. So what you'll see now is that the video is changing with in time with the uh, lower frequencies. So the lower frequencies are triggering that video change. You can't do this in this robot player. All you can do in this robot player is manually select the video from here or using these buttons. Now the main functionality of the remote module is to allow you to apply automation to some of the player parameters in different Ableton channels. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I've got a couple of MIDI channels here and an audio channel and I've dropped this remote module onto each one of them. So you can have as many instances of remotes in the project as you need because you can only have one instance of the player. So if I want to automate this video selection, I could only do it in this channel. But what the remote extension allows me to do is do it in any of these channels. So let's go into this MIDI clip and I'm gonna click on my envelopes tab and I can see I've got my remote extension selected and these are the parameters I can automate. We've got device on, which just will turn the remote module on or off. There we go, it's turned off now and it's back on. I'm gonna get rid of that. Beatbang is the manual beat trigger. So this relates to the beat controls. If you want to know more about how the beat control function in Zwobot works, I've done a dedicated video on that, so go watch that. I'm going to demo this by turning on these effects that I've got. So this is a beat control, this is a beat control, and I'm also going to go to these other channels. I've got one turned on here on this effect. I'm going to turn on, there we go, I've got this one on the crunch effect. So all of these beat controls are controlled by these master beat controls. So this one will sync it to your Ableton project. For example, if I press play now, you're going to see all those beat controls are changing in accordance with this setting. So there we go, we can see it's changing this as well. But if you don't want it to be synced to your BPM, you have this manual trigger, and this is the same as this. This is what the manual beat is. So if I press play now, 
turn that off. Nothing's changing, it's staying on the same setting, but when I hit this, it's changing all of those settings every time I hit it. So this can be good if you want multiple effects parameters, and again, this applies no matter what channel they're on. I've got this crunch on this channel, I've got the candy on this channel, I've got blob on this channel. It's applying the change to all of them across your whole project. So if you want to make changes to multiple parameters across your entire project with a single click, you can do it with this. And if you want it to be synced to your BPM, then you just use this master beat control. But if you want it to be more random, more sporadic, you want to manually control it, you can use this. If I want to automate that, what I might want to do, so again, I've got beat bang selected here. Let's say I want it to change on the second bar and midway through the third bar. This one doesn't have an on or off trigger. It's got two values, value one and value two. And if you want it to change, you basically just need to have it go from one to the other. So here, because it's going from value two to value one, it's gonna change. And then I can have it change from value one to value two. And this will instigate another change. So it's going to change on the second bar and then it's going to change halfway through the third bar. So let's see what this looks like. I'll just go to here so we can see it being triggered here. There. And there. And we can see the change in the actual effects. So if you look at this blob effect. There we go, it changed. And we can see the change in this crunch style here. There we go, it just changed there. And it changed again there. So that's what the beat bang automation looks like. I'm gonna clear that. File A and file B, this just relates to the video files. So if I want to automate that, I've got the numbers here, which correspond to the number of the video. So let's say I want to jump to video six on the second beat, and then I want to jump to video four on the second bar. And then on the third bar, I want to jump to video seven. I can do it like this. I'm going to turn all these effects off now because it makes it quite hard to see the actual videos. And let's turn the metronome on. So it's going to change. There we go, video 6, video 4, and video 7. I'm going to clear this. So what if at this point in my set, I want to put the automation on this channel? Well, because we've got the remote module on there as well, we can do that. This is an audio track. This was a MIDI one, this was an audio one. One thing to bear in mind, if you're going to apply clip automation to an audio track, it needs to be on uh, warp mode, because if you turn warp off, you'll see it disables the envelopes. So I just need to make sure that warp mode is on and now I can apply clip automation. If you didn't want to have warp mode on, what you could do is create a dummy MIDI clip. So for example, I could create a MIDI channel. And let's say this is in this scene. I could just create a dummy middle MIDI clip and put the automation in there and then trigger them both at the same time. And then I'd I'd put another remote module on here. So that's the way around it if you don't want to use uh, warp mode on an audio track. But let's say we're okay with that. I've got my remote here and this time I want to automate the sound trigger. So this relates to those sound reactive features we looked at. So let's say I want it to be disabled for the first bar. But then on the second bar, I want to turn the low pass filter on. And then on the last bar, 
I want to turn the high pass filter on. So we've got high, low, and X, which is disabled. So what's going to happen now? This first bar, the sound reactive feature is going to be disabled. And then when it gets to the second bar, it's going to switch to this low pass. So that will change the video based on the lower frequencies, which in this case, because it's a drum loop, it's going to be the kick drum primarily. So it's going to change the video in time with the kick. And then it'll be disabled again for the third bar. And then when we get to the fourth bar, it's going to go to the high pass. So it's going to change the video based on the higher frequencies, which is going to be the, the symbols primarily. So let's just have a look at what that looks like. So nothing. And now we've got the video changing based on the lows, nothing again, and then based on the highs, so nothing. At this point, it's changing the video based on the kick. Here. Then it's doing nothing, and then now it's changing based on the symbols. So let's say I now want to apply some automation to this channel. We can go over here and in this MIDI clip, I'm going to select my remote extension and we've got this next file and previous file options. Next file relates to these arrows. So that's just going to select the next video here. With this, you've just got zero or next. So whenever next is selected, it's going to play the next video. So in this case, it's going to play the next video on, let's say the second bar and the fourth bar. So let's have a look at that. What's in the metronome on for this? Cause we don't have any percussion. So there it's gone to the next video and it's going to go again there. There, next video. And there and we can also have it go to the previous video there and there jump to robot will automate this button all this does is jumps you back to your robot player so that's more of a user feature it doesn't affect the video output at all the only time you might want to automate that is if you've got a particular point in your set when you know you're going to want to jump back to the player, you could automate that in just to save you having to click the button or, you know, if you're busy focusing on something else, you could automate it. So, for example, if I know on the third bar of this clip, I'm going to want to do something on the player, then when I play this, when we get to the third bar, there we go. So that's everything related to the remote extension.